This is section 19 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Dress of Civilized Woman by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. A large part of the daughter of civilization is her dress, as it should be. Some civilized women would lose half their charm without dress, and some would lose all of it. The daughter of modern civilization, dressed at her utmost best, is a marvel of exquisite and beautiful art and expense. All the lands, all the climes, and all the arts are laid under tribute to furnish her forth. Her linen is from Belfast, her robe is from Paris, her lace is from Venice or Spain or France, her feathers are from the remote regions of southern Africa, her furs from the remoter region of the iceberg and the aurora, her fan from Japan, her diamonds from Brazil, her bracelets from California, her pearls from Ceylon, her cameos from Rome. She has gems and trinkets from buried Pompeii, and others that graced comely Egyptian forms that have been dust and ashes now for forty centuries. Her watch is from Geneva, her card-case is from China, her hair is from... from... I don't know where her hair is from. I never could find out. That is, her other hair, her public hair, her, her Sunday hair. I don't mean the hair she goes to bed with. And that reminds me of a trifle. Any time you want to, you can glance around the carpet of a Pullman car and go and pick up a hairpin. But not to save your life can you get any woman in that car to acknowledge that hairpin. Now, isn't that strange? But it's true. The woman who has never swerved from cast-iron veracity and fidelity in her whole life will, when confronted with this crucial test, deny her hairpin. She will deny that hairpin before a hundred witnesses. I have stupidly got into more trouble and more hot water trying to hunt up the owner of a hairpin in a pullman than by any other indiscretion of my life. End of The Dress of Civilized Woman by Mark Twain Read by John Greenman